Hello everyone and welcome back to my KSP tutorial series in Kerbal Space Program 0 0.90 Beta. In this episode I'm going to tackle the Duna landing with the Kerbal and then hopefully get my Gilly probe underway to fulfill this contract and so if we have time after that I'll be able to tackle the Jewel probe but we'll see. That's a lot to take care of in one episode but first I'm going to introduce a mod. Uh, by now you will have already noticed a very significant change to this scene and that is of course the clouds and so the mod I'm going to introduce is environmental visual enhancements environmental visual enhancements is very very simple it adds clouds to Kerbin and uh, they, uh, in in flight they are 3D volumetric clouds uh, he, once you get above a certain altitude, they end up being a flat layer on the surface like this. Uh, so you'll see Kerbin looking like this. And I think it's a, it's a solid mod to add. It doesn't change gameplay at all. It doesn't change the uh, conditions in the atmosphere or anything. It's just a beautification mod. And so uh, as far as I can tell, if... Uh, if you add it in, you might as well be playing stock. Uh, and I hope they continue to make it compatible for uh, 1.0 so that we can add clouds in. I don't think we're going to get stock clouds in version 1.0. So having this mod remain compatible would be very helpful. And I think it will. Uh, it hasn't been updated since 0.24 and it still works just fine. So I don't see any reason why it won't continue working unless there's of course we are expecting some pretty fundamental changes to the game including the atmosphere but I think it'll still be alright so uh, we'll see but uh, yeah for now you can enjoy clouds around Kerbin and that is a good thing because we certainly need clouds during launches sometimes it's a little bit hard to get a sense of, sense of speed if you don't have some sort of frame of reference but anyway uh, so clouds first I'm also going to introduce Fusebox when we talk about the probe uh, but we'll do that in the VAB once we're getting the probe together, the, the Gilly probe. Alright, but first uh, let's deal with this Duna landing that's supposed to t uh, start taking place in 18 days. Actually, did I say that I'd be talking about Fusebox when we got back to VAB? Actually, we can talk about it now because it's right here. Here's Fusebox. And unfortunately, uh, in order to get the icon for it, you'll see it's not on this toolbar. Uh, you'll need to install uh, the toolbar mod and I I'll put that in for the next episode but yeah so the toolbar mod will have the the icon for this to open and close it so you can get out of the way f if you don't want it showing up generally I want it showing up because as you can see it shows whether we're getting solar input and what our drain is so how much uh, we are consuming so if I start turning well that's, well, okay, there we go. So, first of all, our solar input is obviously changing, and if we face the opposite direction from the sun, uh, let's see, which direction would that be? This way. Okay, if we f are tail first completely, we should get zero, right? And sometimes that's hard to see from this, because if we are already fully charged, uh, it doesn't show us charging any further, but uh, we can use Fusebox to see whether we're going to be getting any more charge if for some reason uh, we're tilted away or we need charge. And that becomes important more for other mods than for stock. Stock, if you're stable and you turn off SAS, there's not much drain unless you have lights on. Uh, but anyway, there are other features, for instance, what kinds of things you want to factor in. Notice reaction wheels are not factored in here, and that's because uh, it's a little bit complicated how they drain, and so it's just ticked off. Um, otherwise, uh, everything else is included. Now, of course, when it comes to your recharge rate, okay, hold on, you might want a warning. Oh, this is a little bit glitchy. Um, you might want a warning about uh, when you're going to be losing your charge and so this will stop any time warp if your charge drops below 30 percent okay and then finally you might want to figure out how much time you're going to be in the dark and uh, therefore how much remaining charge you need left 
and it'll tell you how much uh, charge time you have left if you're draining more than you're generating. Right now that's not the case. But if you're draining more than you're generating, it'll tell you how much time you have left. And then this you can use to figure out your darkness time, which means the time on the dark side of the planet based on what planet you have and what altitude. Okay? So that's fuse box. I'm gonna try and come on come on you. It doesn't want to move very well. Okay, so we are approaching Tuna SOI. And this is our current approach, which is not good enough. We've got an Ike encounter. I don't think we have an Ike contract, so it doesn't matter. Let's uh, correct our situation. So instead of just flying by at this height, we need to get closer to Duna itself. Not that close. Now, let me check air braking calculator to see what exact altitude I need, but I suspect it's going to be around 13 kilometers. Actually, it seems to want me at 11.6 kilometers, but maybe the using this periapsis after the Duna encounter, uh, after the Ike encounter, is messing that up. So I'll be a little bit more conservative. Let's say 12.5 kilometers sounds a little bit safer to me. Again, I'm trying to get into orbit first, uh, and that's partly because I want to make sure that I land on the daylight side. Okay, 12.2 is fine. All right, Lemdorf. Whoa, he is looking crazy. Okay, let's get the Mookie way to help us, and here we go for arrow breaking. No point holding your breath for re-entry effects. Uh, there's just not that much heating around Duna. Not a normal approach. Notice we do have clouds. A uh, thin layer of clouds around Duna. You can sort of see that layer as we're passing through here. And we're going up. Okay, that's orbit. And that's Ike doing its thing again. I think my choice of altitude was a uh, reasonably decent one. I think going 11.6 would have been too low. And again, that's, that was because Ike was sort of messing with our orbit. Okay, conveniently pointing prograde. Let's get to work here. And that's a stable orbit around Duna. Okay. All right, time for the EVA. Get prepared here. Oh darn! Oh darn! Uh, scoot down! Scoot down! Scoot down! All right, EVA report. Keep data. Board. All right. Now, let's review that and transmit that. Data. Oh, nuts! Right, we forgot the common data. We gotta have to recover that. All right. I remember now. Okay. So let's just plan for descent. Yeah, why why don't we try and uh, get close to where our probe was? Uh, well, I guess there are biomes, so we should probably. Well, I mean, it's not like we're doing some. Well, we we are doing the temperature scan, so that is this potentially the same as what the probe is doing. Um, but I don't even know where the biomes of Duna might be. Yeah. Let, let's just try it out. We gotta do an EV report. That's gonna be our main science. So it should be fine. I don't want to hit this valley just yet. I think we'll land short of that. Okay, so let's go with this particular trajectory. Okay. That will be fine. We'll certainly be coming down on the daylight side. So uh, right now I'm going to add the transfer back. Uh, Duna to Kerbin. Because I need to know when we need to get Lendorf headed back home. And you can see that comes before the dual probe thing. So first we're going to let Duna's atmosphere slow us down. And then we're going to 
use thrust to do the rest. I hope they at least fix these little artifacts that we see on Duna, these the little lines, the seams that pop up for version 1.0. It's very, very distracting and immersion killing, if you will. There's the probe. Oh, just not the cliff area, please. Gotta keep an eye on how high we are. Got to start slowing down if we get too low. No, no, that's not what I wanted. Still above 3,000 meters above the surface. Gonna start pitching up. Start giving some throttle now. It's got to take us some time to kill off this velocity. And the ground can come up on us much quicker than that. Gotta get landing gear down. No, well, we're not going down very fast right now. But uh, we are very low. Okay. Okay. Let's call this a good landing spot. Okay, plop down. And we're on the ground, right? Yes. But we have to plant a flag. Okay. Uh, this pod doesn't look particularly steady on the ground. But let's see. Crew port. Keep data. Temperature scan. From the Midlands, but we're going to recover it, so keep data. So, same area as our probe, unfortunately. All right. Uh, now, the pod is going to lose SAS once he EVAs out. That's... Hopefully not going to tip it over. EV report. Keep data board. So we store that inside. Now EVA. Uh, let go. Don't knock into the pod too much. Right. I could have jetpacked him down or something, but... Let's move out. Oh, we can't take surface sample. I guess that'd be just a uh, scientist that can do that. I'll have to check that. But uh, EV report first. Keep data. Now plant a flag. Okay. So, uh, Lemdorf on uh, at Duna Midlands. Okay. And, uh, well, first, do not landing in this series. Well, first, Kerbal, do not landing in this series. Okay. All right. So, Lemdorf. We don't really notice uh, the layer of atmosphere around Duna very much with environmental visual enhancements. Maybe it's just because it's night. There, there's a little bit of a haze on the horizon. I don't know if that's due to environmental visual enhancements or something else. Okay. Up, up, up. It's a little bit hard to just be careful. We don't want to knock the thing over. Or you get knocked. Okay, well, actually, the lander seems relatively steady compared to him. Okay, grab board. Almost worried about running out of EVA fuel for a sec there. Okay, so Lemdorf is back on board. And that is a good thing. Yes. Let's get him back into orbit. There's no point uh, having him stay down here. He's done all the things we need him to do, plan the flag, we'll have to make sure to get the information back in order to fulfill the rest of the contracts. So, yep, 
here we go. Gear up. So again, you can use parachutes to help you descend on Duna, but I've had bad experiences with that sometimes, so I tend to shy away from it. Don't know why I was at half throttle on ascent, but... Situation corrected. Lemdorf is not looking quite so happy anymore. Looks a little bit disoriented. Okay, so that stage has run out. That is just the lander stage. Let's continue. Uh, actually, maybe we should coast to Apoapsis at this point. Uh, no, we could we could go a little bit higher than this. All right, so Lemdorf is now in orbit around Duna, and awaiting a transfer back to Kerbin in 122 days. Either that or some sort of rescue. We'll see. What the Delta V is like, he should have enough Delta V, but you know, we'll, we'll make sure of that before we actually get him going on a transfer. And uh, with that, I think we can head on to our Gilly mission. Okay, so here's our EVE lander that we used previously, and I guess we might as well just uh, simplify and go with it this time. Probably we're going to be able to recover this. We'll, we'll be able to bring it back to Kerbin. At least that's my plan. So uh, aside from the side boosters, hopefully it'll be fully reusable. But we'll we'll see. We'll take that in stride. But uh, let's just change the curb. And really, I never usually change this. I usually use all the numbers based on curb. And I just remember what the thrust to weight ratio and all that is uh, for the other bodies. And that's a little bit more straightforward for me. So now we've got a good little system. The lander has 3,500 delta V, which is more than enough to get to Gilly and come back, even without air braking at at Eve. So looks all good, but this that's yeah, it actually has a lot more than that. Wonder if we can trim some mass off. It it could use an extra parachute if it's gonna come back to Kerbin. Let me reconfigure this a little bit based on the fact that we're landing on Gilly. Now, you know what? Uh, we don't have the larger parachutes anyway. I was thinking of using the larger parachute on top and dumping the ones on the side, but we don't have them unlocked. And otherwise, I think this is okay. We don't have any new science to slap on, but the one change I can make without any reservation is to put on Kerbal Engineer so we don't have to keep switching to map view to see stuff. I haven't toyed around at the computer flight unit and uh, probably not going to. If you want to see the functionality of that, uh, well, just try it out. Um, really, all I need is the readouts that are provided by Kerbal Engineering System. And so... Yep, I think this is just ready to go as it is. It's a little bit heavy, it's a little bit overpowered for Gilly. Uh, but I want to keep the yeah, I'll keep it as is. We can manage it. Okay, so this is now... Well, we'll just uh, keep it as Eve Lander and we'll send it over. Okay, uh, let's uh, time warp to the right phase angle and then I'll get this going. Okay, so uh, we're getting into alignment with Eve and... I just recalled I did want to do something. We, we can toss off those, those uh, rocket boosters and instead put some side pods that'll help us uh, do a lot better in terms of especially recovering the center body and then maybe we can make the whole system fully recoverable instead of uh, dumping the SRBs. So let me go back to the VAB once we get this. Well we don't have to get it precise honestly. Um, let's get it within an hour and that'll be close enough. So what I'm gonna do is one of my favorite tricks which is using these tail connectors. So I'm gonna unlock this. They're, they're heavy that's the downside. Maybe too heavy for this. But what you can do is you can, as you see, put little side pods. And if we extend them properly, we can put 
other engines at the bottom. Like so. And of course, as long as you have fuel lines unlocked, you can feed those out. And probably we want more than three, but let's see what our numbers are like. Okay, so thrust weight ratio is much less than one, but the engines are not in the right place. Ah, now we're way more than uh, way more than we need. What we actually need is more fuel in the center. Well, there are a number of ways of doing that. Okay, getting there. So that gives us two two engines there. But we need about 250 more delta V just to be safe. We could manage it. The yeah, we could manage it, but just to be safe. So the center engine will cut out first. That's better for stability anyway. And then we put our landing struts on these guys. We'll have to shift them once we get them on. Or we could add the higher thrust engines, but if eventually we're only going to have the outer ones functioning, we should have gimbling engines on those. Okay, but now... See, every time we add more engines, our delta V goes down because the mass of the engines kills it. But this is under full pressure. Hold on. Oh, okay. We're 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 much better off than I was thinking. Uh, in fact, maybe we can lose a set of engines. This is making it more expensive, though. But we're trying to retrieve it. Okay, I can see that working out for us. Let's tuck in the... So, I mean... Not much reserve fuel, though. I think I've got to unlock this tank. Not a huge amount, but now when I get to 50% pressure, it gets to 4,500. We, we probably got more than enough. I hope. Okay, so the question is, will this work better? I don't know. Uh, so, we'll call this Gilly Lander. It is very different now. Haven't really named the launchers, but we haven't... I mean, if this works out, maybe this launcher is going to be a more constant thing. If this doesn't work out, probably not. Um, we've got the parachutes on top. Might be a lot heavier now, though. Oh no, I forgot to add the strut, uh, the launch clamps. Also, it looked like some strut work was probably advisable. That's a problem with using these aerodynamic nose cones. How are we on part count? Not well, nowhere near our limits. Okay, I think we've got it now. Okay, looking okay, relatively stable. He says before it explodes, but no, uh, we should be all right. This is uh, getting in the way of stuff. Well, it doesn't like what like to move. I have to say, I'm gonna have to put two bar in just so I can get it away. Uh, all right, so all the engines are proper. That engine is the one on top. Okay, let's go. Clouds. So this is our first foray really into the clouds here. Entirely pleasant sort of thing. The skipper is going to cut out first. I wonder if we have enough thrust. Okay, we're good. Still good. Okay, those engines have cut out. Now just three left. Yes, this worked out quite well, actually. Um, let's see, vessel... 
Delta V in this stage 1,400 should be fine. Uh, not on, the, we'll have to conserve more on descent, but should be fine for now. At least we'll get into orbit. Uh, we're running out of a Delta V on this stage. Might not be so easy to bring it back. Could have just dumped some fuel on the top. Didn't really need that much. Okay, let's coast to Aplapsis at this point. This thing is very hard to handle right now. Okay, let's shut it down there. 106 by 99, we'll call it. Let me shut down the engines that are off. That's good, that one's not. So about 215 left uh, for the landing, that's not much. But anyway, let's get our mission off and away. Should be, well, we've got eight hours left in in terms of electric charge for the lander, which should be fine to get to the daylight side. No problems with that. Okay, let's get off. Okay, there we go. Lander is ready to go. Make sure I have a modicum of control. Not much. It's very difficult to steer. Does it have lights? No. Okay, but it's ready to go. Meanwhile, there's this guy. And this guy is going to have to be brought back down. Let's do that. Really need to do a plan of flag at the KSC so that we have a landmark there. Okay, wow. 30 kilometers, almost on the button. Okay, if I knew what longitude I was burning at, this would be a very interesting test. And, of course, Cobalt Engineer would have told me that if I had the system in place. But, anyway, here we go. So again, there is a trade-off. I mean, with using these aerodynamic nose cones, uh, you might go... Yeah, well, I mean, this is an obviously wonderful thing to do to put your engines on the side like this, but... They do weigh 0.4 tons apiece, so we're carrying 2.4 tons extra that we weren't before, not including the engines and the fuel tanks. It's just complete dead weight. So you're going to have to decide whether that trade-off is worthwhile, and we're going to find that out pretty soon right now. Because uh, this thing is 31 tons right now, and we've only got 8 parachutes on the top. We're going to have to use some thrust to slow ourselves down on descent. Okay, so in stock aerodynamics, I normally want to cross the coast at under 34 kilometers, usually above 33. Maybe 32 is the minimum, but we seem to be a little bit low, so we'll be a little bit inland, as far as I could tell. The question is whether we're going to hit the mountains or not, and that is a distinct possibility. We might even be further inland than the mountains. Hmm. Okay, let's slow down time warp. I want to avoid the mountains at all. We're going to be inland from the mountains. I don't think we're going to hit the mountains. We're slowing down quite a lot. I, I guess we're in stock. I might as well take advantage of the fact and use the parachutes now. With real shoots uh, mod, you can uh, you don't get to deploy the parachutes at above the speed of sound. So you gotta be careful with that. Okay, cloud time. Really, as as nice as the clouds are on ascent, they're really a lot better for descent. They're very scenic, cinematic, and all. So we're pretty far off this time, but the main thing is to see if this is recoverable at all or not. And I suppose a little bit of slope will really test that. Okay, full parachute deployment. Straight up, SAS on. 
We're at 12.4, which is way too fast. You know, though, if it wasn't on a slope, I think it worked out. But we could do better. We can do better. Alright, well, uh, apparently I can recover this piece and probably recover some of the debris as well. Let's do that. No, oh, didn't get much out of that, but... Uh, yeah, I think we're uh, getting closer to something I can recover. Uh, of course, I've done... I, I could just import uh, one of the recoverable launchers that I've done in my other series. I could just, uh, I mean, we've got the skipper. I could actually build the OVX right now. So, yeah, if you've seen my my Hard Time series, I actually have a launcher with four of the skippers at the bottom, and it's a hefty thing. It's very wide, and I use that to launch payloads of up to 14 tons to orbit, and it comes down just fine every time. And the numbers I used for recovery to uh, determine where my altitude should be on re-entry are actually based on the OVX testing. So the OVX's numbers are what I use and it might not be very valid for for other rockets. So I could build it right now because we've got the fuel tanks and the re relevant parts. Maybe I should just just so I don't uh, drip around too much. But anyway let's get on to our mission and get the EVE transfer underway. Okay not too much problem getting this transfer uh, we've also got the fortunate situation of being close to our ascending node, so probably not much of an adjustment needing to be made on the inclination. I should mention that environmental visual enhancements also comes with the city lights, and you can delete those if you don't want them simply by removing that plugin, the citylights.dll plugin. So, uh, yeah, pretty simple to do that. Anyway, let's go. Uh, I started a little bit too late. By the way, if you don't like the way the clouds are clipping into the terrain here, you, you can go into the the config file for the mod and just increase the height of the clouds. You can just increase the number in that in that line. Tweak it however you like it. All right. Let's get into interplanetary space and do an adjustment at our ascending node. Well, I guess we're pretty much at our ascending node because it's not even showing it to us. Okay. It's doing that thing where it doesn't want me to select the little blue line. Okay, so let's try and make an adjustment here. Let's just do a inclination change. Can't create a maneuver. But inclination change is pretty straightforward. If you're at the ascending node, point south, 180 degrees. I'm almost willing to take 2,290 kilometers here. Let's see if I can get a little bit better than that. Or worse. Ugh. Nah, okay, alright, alright. I'll take 2,600. Jeez. Okay, lots of spinning around trying to find the best number when I don't have uh, the ability to click on the orbit. See, problem? Well, yeah, it's just not letting me click on this orbit right now. So, yeah. But it's good to know what to do even if you can't create a maneuver node. And of course, earlier in the series, we went through that situation so we have some experience with that and since the game occasionally glitches so that you can't create a maneuver node it's good to know that and to have that experience so here we are let's make sure Kerbal Alarm Clock is ready to go for us so yes Gillander time to SOI change that's the entry into the EVE SOI we will want that but before we do that we'll have to transfer our guy Lemdor from Duna to Kerbin. He'll be on his way as the Gillilander does its thing and the Jewel Probe does its thing and then he'll probably reach Kerbin after those two. 
All right, so that is our current plan. And with that, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments, suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.